welcome to a time when there were no guitars and no drums, just synthesizers. It was the 1970s. The place was Britain, and our heroes were a maverick bunch of young pioneers, obsessed by Kraftwerk and science fiction. All across the country, these synthetic dreamers would imagine the very sound of the future yesterday. And by the 80s, their dreams would become a reality as Britain went synth pop. Welcome to a time when machines ruled the world. By the 1970s, we were living in the future. Our cities were going space age. Victorian slums had been torn down and replaced by ultra-modern concrete high-rises. Entertainment also looked to the future. Our cinema and television screens were full of tantalizing glimpses of a future that seemed just around the corner. Released in 1971, Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange was a futuristic and violent vision of concrete Britain that captured the zeitgeist. The film's soundtrack was composed by American synth pioneer Walter, now Wendy Carlos. It would have a profound effect on a generation of would-be musicians. That was probably a lot of people's maybe first time they'd heard electronic music, you know, on the score to that film. It made me forever associate classical music with people getting their heads kicked in, which is, is kind of a bit strange. The soundtrack to Clockwork Orange, fantastic synth sounds in that, you know, big Moog synthesizer that Wendy Carlos used. And they were all orchestrated. Well, Wendy, who, who then said she was Walter, I've, I've never quite worked out what was going on there, was, was an absolute inspiration, you know. And the first time we'd ever heard that sort of absorbent synth bass sound, you know, just raved about it. Some of the people who would be the future post-punk people would listen to the, the, the three or four sort of original compositions that Carlos did on that soundtrack that were much more sinister and foreboding. There was a kind of uh, a linkage made there between those sounds and the idea of a cold future, a bleak future, and that probably sort of sunk quite deeply into the psyche of a lot of young musicians at that time. For a generation of electronic dreamers, Carlos's soundtrack would offer a glimpse of an alienated synthetic future, but the true divine spark would arrive on our television screens in 1975. Tomorrow's World gave Britain its first glimpse of Kraftwerk, a German band who played only electronic instruments. They would invade our shores later the same year. We played one of our first gigs, 1975, of our English tour in Liverpool. The Wings Over Britain tour was playing the same night in the town. That was also the reason why our hall was only half crowded. All of our posters were stuck right next to the posters of the Wings, so it made us proud, of course, you know. Amazingly, they came to Liverpool um, in October of 75, and I sat in seat Q36 and witnessed the first day of the rest of my life. 75 was all, you know, the era of long hair and flared trousers and guitar solos, and these guys all came out in suits and ties. Two of them looked like they were playing electronic tea trays with wired-up knitting needles, and I was just 
blown away. It really, it was, it was incredible. We had no long hair. We didn't wear blue jeans. We we had suits on grey suits, short hair, you know, and we looked like uh, the children of Werner von Braun or Werner von Siemens. And we saw us so, you know, engineer musicians like that. Instead of dancing uh, boys on, on, on stage to arouse the girls, you know. The interesting thing afterwards, there was a knock at our backstage door. It was a band. They were called Orchestral Manoeuvres in the Dark. And the leader, Eddie McCluskey, was really astonished and happy that he uh, was meeting us in person. And he said, you know, guys, you have shown us the future. This is it. We throw away our guitars tomorrow and buy all synthesizers. In terms of inspiring people to, to not just have a synthesizer in their rock band, but to be completely electronic, I think you, you can never underestimate the impact of craft work. Trans Europe Express had the same impact on the synth poppers that the anarchy in the UK had on people who wanted to be punk rockers. Next year, Kraftwerk hoped to eliminate the keyboards altogether and build jackets with electronic lapels, which can be played by touch. In British music in the mid-70s, the synth was a remote beast. Although they would become much cheaper later in the decade, a synthesizer then could cost as much as a small house. They were associated with rich and technically gifted progressive musicians. Until punk came along, you had to be Keith Emerson. If you wanted to be in a band, you had to have learnt your instrument for at least eight or nine years before you would dare come out and play it. And it was the simply the inspiration of, of The Damned and The Clash um, that said, Get up and do it, you know. D do your best. If it's crap, maybe, maybe the simplicity will get you through. Whilst the music didn't concern itself with synthesizers, the attitude of the punk movement would inspire those with an interest in electronic music to do it themselves. All the infrastructure around punk we absolutely loved. It's just that the actual music we saw as being quite old fashioned and, and having, uh, being, being a bit of a one trick pony. So what we did was we took the attitudes of punk and gave it a different context, i.e. let's make music that nobody's heard before. Across the country, small pockets of experimentation surfaced, inspired primarily by punk and Kraftwerk. We're in my studio at home in southeast London. One day I opened my email inbox and there was like 10 emails from a very disparate bunch of people saying, you've got to go to eBay now and buy this. And what it was was Kraftwerk's original vocoder, which was being sold on eBay. And it was the one that was used on Autobahn. I thought, well, this is the equivalent to, for a guitarist of getting Jimi Hendrix guitar that was used on Purple Haze or something, you know. I first got a synthesizer in 1977, and I bought a second hand called 700S from Macari's music shop in Charing Cross Road. The thing that pissed me off about punk was you had to learn three chords to, to be in a punk band. If you had a synthesizer, all you had to do was press one key with a finger, you know.